Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. So, thank you guys for commenting, because uh, I didn't realise I'd actually missed the Chimera. So, we're going to jump in and finish off the Chimera, and then I believe that is actually the last of the cruisers. I've definitely done the Con Connemara Chaos, pretty certain I've done Light Cone, Callisto, Jaeger, Predator, Io, Casso 6, and the KCCPV. So, pretty certain... This is the last one. I will be double checking after I record this, though, um, just to make sure I've definitely got them all done uh, and they're uploaded. I think most of those are released already. Uh, and then, um, yeah, not sure if I'll be bringing out fighters or corvettes next. Uh, haven't really decided on that one. Um, so, yeah, either way, Chimera. So the Chimera is actually a pretty good cruiser. It is front row predominantly with the both the ballistic and the heavy cannon type. The defensive type, however, does sit in the mid row, which is a bit odd. But we'll talk about that a bit later as it's one of my ones that I don't currently have. And I'm pretty certain you guys are far more interested in talking about the heavy cannon type. So the base version, as you can see, you've got an absolute shed ton of hit points. You've got fantastic armor. That's like most cruisers armor. And this is at it at base without any armor upgrades whatsoever. Like I said, you are a front row, uh, front row ship. The one letdown of this being front row is it's literally got zero energy shield. And I believe you can only uh, pump that up a little bit to, yeah, I think it's 10%. So 10% energy resistance, however, you can pump, you know, the armor up quite a bit higher. Uh, I believe it hits around 150 armor, which is you know, pretty substantial for a cruiser. Um, however, because the HP is so high and the energy resistance is so high and it's front row, upgrade the HP first. This is going to give you quite a nice chunk of HP to sit there and be able to tank, and you are mostly tanking with this because it has cannon systems, so the hit rate's not particularly great on it. Um, but yeah, I would recommend double HP, one of the energy resi uh, resistances, and then going into one of the physical resistances for your four slots, giving you a nice balance about uh, you know being able to defend a bit, against, a bit against everything. However, at the same time, bear in mind that is still a little bit low on the energy side and, you know, you're seeing a lot of Taurus and stuff running uh, front row at the moment. Uh, potentially even IOs being run front row at the moment because um, of the IO high speed and then buffing its accuracy and all that. However, it shouldn't really target the heavy cruisers first. So... Pretty decent armor system. It's front row, so you're going to have a nice bit of tank, and it is a pretty solid tank on your front row. After that, though, you are obviously going to start pushing up its damage. At 450 cruising speed, it's pretty low, so you can consider going into the cruising speed now just to get it up to speed to keep up if you're mixing this in with frigates and destroyers. But at the same time, I'd probably just go into the Fortress system here. This is its main weapon system where you have these uh, dual triple cannons and th uh, four uh, normal cannons that are anti-aircraft. So thankfully the AA is getting buffed at the same time. Uh, but you're really only trying to look at buffing this main triple cannon that it's got with 350 damage per hit. You have the two times one attacks per round, which is actually quite nice. The cooldown of 16 seconds sucks a little bit, but at the same time, it's a four second lock on. So it's actually going to get into combat and attack pretty quickly, uh, especially on the cruisers, because I think a lot of them are like five seconds plus, uh, some of them even raging up to like eight second lock on times. So this is gonna get some damage out pretty early on and quickly. And my game just crashed. So, back to where we were before the game crash. Fortress battery system, again, the uh, all ship focus fire uh, with a cooldown of 8 seconds, every 90 seconds for 10 seconds, it is actually quite good, but at the same time, I still don't recommend it. Uh, all it does is it makes sure that, you know, your missile system that's on here, which I think is the other system, and all the cannons are firing at a single target, which is fantastic for bursting down and potentially killing off an enemy, but it's only 10 seconds, which is sometimes not just enough anyway. And again, you're waiting a minute and a half for this to trigger at the start of a battle, then you're going to wait after 10 seconds, you're going to wait another minute and a half. At that point, the battle's probably over anyway before this even triggers twice. So recommend ignoring the uh all ships focus fire here i do recommend picking up the hit rate against frigates destroyers in the current meta that is the you know 
the majority of things that are going to be uh, shooting at you and you're going to be shooting. So having the hit rate bonus is going to be quite nice here. Uh, you can ignore the hit rate against fighters and corvettes. The chimera just can't do anything about that. Reducing the firing duration is actually pretty decent here. That just wrap, increases the speed at which you fire at, putting it back into cooldown. So actually picking up the firing duration will probably be slightly more beneficial in the long run than picking up the cooldown, even though the DPM is stating that the cooldown is better. I'd recommend going firing duration here into double cooldown. That gives you four slots, and then you have two left over for the double cannon damage and 350 damage plus 30 percent plus another 20 percent from both of these it's quite a bit of damage output that this can actually hit and this is the base variant so after you've done the fortress battery system you can go into the assault missile system and similarly here you want to be picking up the hit rate and then picking up the cooldown you can ignore the hit rate against cruisers and higher class ships. This hit rate enough and being a missile system is enough for it to be accurate. So you can ignore that, allowing you to get some extra damage output with uh, one extra damage increase. Again, though, at 280 damage per hit, not quite as strong as the cannons. So most of your damage is still coming from the cannons here. After that, go into the propulsion system and pick up your cruising speed i'd probably pick up the double cruising speed here yeah it's you know 2250 warp and that means you're going to be slow getting anywhere and the game crashed again but at the same time it's just better to have the movement when you're moving about for combat situations anyway so let's hope we get no more crashes as we move on to the heavy cannon version of the chimera so likewise with the base version we are front row again so you're going to go straight into the armor system here again picking up probably the double hp the phys uh, energy resistance and then one of the physical resistances giving you the ability to actually put out some of its damage potential uh, before it gets blown up you lose the missile system on this one and it gets replaced by uh, twin very, very large 450 cannons. And uh, it's quite nice, actually, because this one's quite TP. It's not as TP intensive because there's less sub uh, systems to play around with here. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's quite good for that, to be honest. So you get 450 damage per hit cannons. You've also got the three 350 damage per hit cannons, and you still have the anti-aircraft cannons. We can ignore the anti-aircraft cannons for the most part. Again, concentrating on these big, big damage numbers that you can potentially get out of. Same as before, the ship focus fire. It would be really good if it was like 30 seconds or something, but as it's not, don't even pick it. Hit rate against frigates destroyers is a requirement on this thing. So is the... Uh, Where's the other hit rate? And the hit rate against cruisers and higher. This is mostly due to the fact that cannons do struggle and the bigger cannons do struggle a bit more uh, to actually hit anything. And at this point, you are really kind of prioritizing this, trying to hit cruisers and that kind of thing and knock them out as quickly as possible because its DPM is absolutely, like, it's really good. We're at 1,800 and, you know, that's without 30%. Uh, weapon boost and you're adding you know like a thousand for every two like six percent on the weapon cooldown as well because this thing just shoots like a beast so after picking up the uh double hit rate i'd recommend picking up the double cooldown here the firing duration is the same as before i do recommend picking it up but you can ignore it um, all it does is it allows you to basically fire a little bit quicker. Uh, so it acts more like a cooldown. It's not represented on how much this actually helps. The firing duration at 2%, going up to 10% firing duration reduction, is actually quite nice at that 10%. The 2% bonus is obviously just not all that. Again, cooldown, really useful here. And then you are left with, I believe, a single damage on this shit because you're going double dip, hit rate, double cooldown. Oh, no, you take the double damage still. So there you go. Double damage as well, so you're getting 20% plus 30% on these massive cannons that do 450 damage per hit, which, you know, you just... It, it's absurd, pretty much. After that... We've done the Arbor system. There's only one system left to talk about, and that is, you know, 
either cruising speed or warp speed. At 450 uh, cruising speed, I believe this gets up to around 600 with both the cruising speed upgrades, and that's probably what I recommend over the warp speed. Getting into position through warp, yeah, okay, just plan ahead a little bit further and get it into, you know, battle a bit quicker. But the cruising speed where you're, you know, maneuvering around, getting your fleets into position, I think the cruising speed just outweighs uh, the extra warp speed, in my opinion. After that, unfortunately, I don't have it, but it's the defensive type. So we'll jump into the tech uh, room quick. I believe this is Noma, and that'll be my missing defensive Chimera. Ship details. So you get a base 130 armor. You've got an increased HP roll here as well. Uh, you have lost your missiles or your heavy cannons. The integrated battery only consists of the... Uh, three dual cannons and you lose uh, the AA cannons, but you do gain uh, torpedo launchers Which is uh, not too bad again. These are 10 second duration one times two attacks per round 15 second cooldown and a four second lock on time. So not too bad The issue I have with this is it sits in the middle row which in theory, could be useful, yes, at the current moment with the potential of Jaeger and Predator being sort of meta at the moment to counter the Swarm Fleet because they're going directly for, um, for carriers. There is a potential that people may start running things that specifically try and go for cruisers, and this sat in the mid-row will be able to tank a hell of a lot of damage. I believe it gets up to 220 armor. Again, it struggles with energy resistance. I think still only getting up to 10% uh, energy resistance, but I believe it also gets up to about 100,000 HP. So it's uh, it's actually not that bad. The integrated armory system, again, I think is upgraded pretty much the same, where you're looking to pick up the hit rates first, moving into the cooldowns, and then the damage and the firing durations if they are there. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty much it for the defensive crew, uh, defensive type. I highly recommend running the heavy cannon over these two, uh, over the other two, and I'd recommend running the base versus the defensive at the current moment. However, that is subject to change if the meta shifts around to a more cruiser-heavy fleet design, where this tanking mid-row uh, will be quite nice, because then... Anything prioritizing cruisers that are going for, you know, mid-row ships or uh, rear-row ships, going to have to go through this thing first, and it will sit there, and it will take a beating uh, to get through it as well, which is quite decent. So, defensive type has, you know, potential in the future. Heavy cannon type, fantastic ship. Definitely try it out and run it. It's between, it's a toss up for me at the moment with my IOs and my heavy cannon uh, chimeras. A lot of people do like running the HC chimeras. Uh, I prefer running the IO at the current moment just due to uh, the amount of hit rate you can buff into that thing. So it starts hitting frigates and destroyers. And with the still a relatively heavy frigate destroyer fleet, meta around um i just think the the hc chimera falls a little bit shorter than the io albeit it does tank better so that is the chimera and with that that is the end of the cruises i'm pretty certain i've got them all now and you will too apologies about the game crashing i actually had to uninstall the game and reinstall the game and it's obviously not crashed now uh, that i've done the hc uh, chimera and the defensive so hopefully that has fixed the issue um and yeah let me know down in the comments when you what you want to see more the corvettes or the fighters and bombers next um i am missing several of those so i'll have to work out a way of uh getting the info off on them i've got the info for them obviously because i've tested with them with other people that have them uh but i don't have the blueprints myself so i'll work something out for that uh but yeah don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.